Welcome back to another Construct video and in this video I want to show off some of the new changes in R336. Normally I don't cover the updates but this one's got some really really useful features in so I want to spend some time to cover some of my favourites. We'll start off with this example here. What we've got is a burger, I can put it over the cat and the cat says meow. Nothing too special code wise but how I'm achieving this is quite special. We're using this thing called cat feed cats and this is what we call a custom action this is something brand new in this version think of this as a function however this function applies to the object only as opposed to being functions that apply to everything which means you end up with a big list of functions so how do we set this up well on our event sheet we can right click and add a custom action we can choose which object we want to apply this to so in this case the cat and we can even give it a name so in this case we'll call it feed cat you can give it a description and the category i'm not quite sure what the category is about just yet so we'll just press ok we can then choose what happens so in my example here i got the cat to spawn some text on image point one and i changed what the text said i'm not going to go into that level of detail and then we choose how we trigger it so i just said if cat is overlapping and I haven't got the burger in this code, so I'm just going to say chicken. And then when we click on the cat, we've got an option that doesn't normally appear. It's called a custom action, and it says feed cat. So this seems really, really good so far to be able to reduce our functions down, apply functions to certain objects. But it gets even better when we introduce families. So now I've got the same scenario again, but this time with more animals. What I've done is I've said if the burger is overlapping animals, animals feed and again using that custom action now animals when i feed them what it will do is spawn the text it will say yum wait a second and destroy the burger and as you can see yum yum meow and that's the interesting bit see if we create an action for the cat and we give it the exact same name as the family function it calls this override which means the cat will do something different so we can give functions the same name but change them slightly. This is a really, really poor example because again, it's just a bit of a concept, but where this could be useful is if you've got enemies and the enemies do a lot of the same actions. However, let's say one enemy moves slightly different. Let's say it's a flying enemy or an enemy attack slightly different. You could override the attack function. You could over uh, override the move function to do something slightly different while keeping most of the other functions the same. This is really big. I think this is just the beginning of what we could do with this. I'm really excited to see what people come up with these ideas. Next change is just a bit of a minor change with the pathfinding behavior. And what you can do is you've got two new options, to destination or anywhere along the path. So to destination, as far as I'm aware, is the original one that we've got. And you can see it makes its way to the path. However, its movement is a little bit blocky. What the anywhere along the path tends to do is actually smooth out those nodes and you get a bit of a less blockier movement. It's a bit hard to see with my example here, but I'll put the uh, site for example on that they did because they did a really good job of actually showing this using um, lines to show the different node paths. And again, it's just smoothing out your pathfinding. What's more interesting with the pathfinding is the start path group. What this allows you to do is actually set up a group. In this case, all my red blocks are part of a group and that's using this code here. So first of all, we've got the base cost. Um, I need to look a bit more about this one here, um, but the main ones are the sales spread. So this adds actually a cost to going the same way as other people and max workers. And this is sort of how many paths there are. This one I want to explore a bit more because I don't know too much about it, but with what I've set up with this short demo, we've now got them going lots of different ways instead of all of them going the same way and they're going to try and avoid each other as well so now there's a cost to actually go in the same way as each other or being on top of each other and this is really useful if you're making stuff like a strategy game or maybe like a zombies game having it where they actually split up and move around in different areas is really really exciting and i think we could do a lot with this as well this is a really great change really fun change and again i think this one is really really big and people could do a lot with it final change is one that was around in the last update but i think it's really important to talk about it and this is just the fact that you can randomize tiled backgrounds so i've got my left tile background here it's just a wooden floor and what i'm able to do is click on the tile randomization 
and it randomizes those tiles and it just gives a slightly different look. So it's a really quick way to create stuff like dungeon tiles or anything like that. And here's just the example again, but this time making all the tiles a little bit smaller. Again, very situational, but if you're creating a quick game and you want a floor put in place or some sort of walls, this could be a really unique way to get something a bit more unique, a bit more different without having to put loads of effort into the design. Fun to play around with. I still think it has lots of potential and you could do a lot with it, but essentially it's taking every single square and rotating them slightly and there's a bit of a blend tool in there as well that you can adjust. So this is all the big important things that I think have come out in the new update. Obviously tile randomization with the update before. Let me know what you think. Are you excited for this update? Do you think that this is a big change and what ideas have you come up with? But that's it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.